Zerub, 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 Zerub.
every culture has its own stories and narratives. Yeah, uh, yeah, sure. I'm just waiting here for my panel. Hello. Hello. Hi, Jordy. Hi, how are you doing? I am good. Good to see you. Good to see you too. So it I looks didn't... like a, we are the two of us, huh? So far, only two of us, and it's about 12 minutes after the hour, so... Yeah. I hope the other guys uh, log in. I didn't hear anything from them. Yeah, I saw it in, uh, on the email exchange, eh? and there was a guy saying that uh, he's going to be... A, He's not gonna be able to do it, but uh, well, yeah. Anyways, we'll have a conversation. <laughs> yeah, we'll have. Um, well, we have about two minutes left for those guys to join in if they're gonna join in. Yeah. Otherwise, I can interview you for forty-five minutes. Well, we can we can do both. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> half, half and a half. <laughs> <laughs> we'll we'll see. Where, wonder where they are. I don't have their phone numbers. I can't call them. Me neither. Uh, let me let me send another email and. Uh... We're missing uh, Jorab and Ned. Yes. We have two people in our session so far. Two of them? I think uh, we are the two of, the I two of us. Huh? I just, it's just the two of us, I believe, yeah. Yeah. There was a guy who just left. Yeah, yeah.
Well, it's about, uh, it's quarter after now. It's the time for us to start the meeting. And uh, so far, there's only two of us. And I don't see that anybody else has actually joined our session here, Jordy. Yeah, I see that. Um, I think probably we should, uh, if nobody joins us within a bit, you know, then maybe we should cancel the session. Yeah, I, I agree, because otherwise it makes no sense just you and I talking. Yeah, we had a nice chat last week already. Yeah, we already had it. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> One good positive thing out of this se this session, we met. Yeah. Again. yeah, yeah, that's for sure. That's for sure. By the way, are you are you uh, planning to come to Barcelona for the Mobile World Congress? I was at the Mo Mobile World Congress about three or four years ago. It's huge. Um, it is. And uh, but I don't. When is it taking place? Taking place first week of March this year, okay. next year, right? And uh, well, more than the uh, Mobile World Congress, there is a parallel session which is called Four Years from Now. Four years from now. Yeah, it's uh, it's the parallel session about startups, innovation, technology, networking in uh, in different spaces related, of course, to digital, eh, to mobile, and uh, I guess. This might be a, a great opportunity uh, for a person like you uh, to attend, and uh, there's lots of session there, sessions there. Very interesting. Are, are you attending it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did th since the very beginning. I think uh, we are in the 11th edition or 10th edition. Uh, I lost the count, but... Uh... Okay, I, um, I'm going to make a note of that. Mobile World Congress. Yeah, and... Uh, more than the mobile, which is always nice, it's the uh, uh, four years from now. It's four Y N, they abbreviate, and uh, I think that you can attend it uh, in a kind of an hybrid uh, mode. Eh? It's uh, there's some online sessions this year because of the pandemic. So even if you cannot commute to Barcelona, yeah, yeah you okay. can just join online eh, if you like. Yeah, I went to it. I was invited by another friend of mine. I forget a lady from uh, California who was uh, a speaker. She had a she had a booth there. Right. So she asked me if I would join her. I'm trying to remember even who who that was right now. And uh, we, uh, but we, I mean, it's it's so huge. It's, it is. Uh, I don't know. It must be ten thousand people attending it or something. Even more. Even more. Eh, I guess. Yeah. I think it's around ten thousand, uh, twenty thousand. Uh, yeah, it's like a crazy week eh, within the city uh, in terms of innovation. It's like, a, yeah. I'm gonna tell my partner. You know, I told you about my 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 CEO, the Indian guy, um, Sushil from Travelex. Right. I still have I still have to make that connection and set up a call. I'm still not sure yet whether we'll be there's. There's a good chance we'll be in um, in Madrid in what? in two weeks because uh, the um, there's a big family office there, a huge family office. They're actually from Galicia. Oh, um, really? They're going to be down, come down, and um, uh, and we'll meet them in in Madrid. Plus Amadeus. You know what? Uh, this is like uh, things that happen in life. Eh? This type of coincidences. Eh? Uh, right, just right after we had the chat, I, I met a woman from Amadeus. Yeah, I, let me just tell you who she is. Oh, okay. Uh, she's a uh, Marion uh, Mesnash. Yeah, she's head of uh, Next Wave. It's an Amadeus business incubator eh? based in, in in Madrid. So yeah. I was presenting in an open innovation conference in Berlin. I did it online this time. And she was also one of the speakers. Huh? I, I met her online. I had a call with her online about uh, three weeks ago with uh, Sushil. Okay, fantastic. So you, you know Marion as well. Huh? She's, uh, I think she's the director, the founder of the uh, business unit. Yeah. She's been there for almost 11 years or so. Yeah. Since the, since the, the uh, Amadeus Foundation in 2008, uh, they said, or nine. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's quite quite new company yeah yeah yeah. well we have two people who have joined us now um so we're live uh we have valerie terranova and we have cyprian dan costea who i know from the btt group in romania uh so say hello to them and um 
we are just uh, just uh, saying that you know the two other just for your for Cyprian and Valerie, two other speakers panelists from our uh, our panel have not yet joined, and uh, so it may be only two of us, and it may not even be worthwhile holding the session if we're going to just have two of us because there's uh, there's not much uh, cross cross dialogue. And I see Benjamin has just joined us. A futurist and strategist and philosopher. I I wish we could bring our our uh, our our participants on the line with us so we could have a little bit broader discussion. Yeah, it would be fantastic. Huh? I don't know if there's a way to bring them in uh, by by uh, maybe I can assign, and we'll sort of change the format of it. Instead of only uh, two of us speaking, we would have uh, whoever is in the session. Since I uh, have been doing these sessions, I've been attending. My name is John Cook. I'm attending these these Horasis sessions both physically and in person and in virtually for about 10, 12 years since Horasis started. And um, um, the uh, the they're they're very lively and a lot of people join. But lately, uh, in the virtual uh, format. And the, the participation has really dropped down to just a very few people participating. So I think this uh, pandemic is, has really forced uh, Horasis uh, into trying to re, uh, reconfigure its, its, its business model. And I hope that they go back to the physical uh, meetings next year. I think Frank is planning to do that sometime in, uh, in Kashkai in, in Portugal. Um, so let me see if it's possible here in the chat. Maybe we can go into the chat here. Majority. Comments or questions? Can you join us by voice or video? Once the mic, okay, so I'm gonna give the mic here. How do I give the mic here? I'm trying to assign the mic, ah, here we go. We've got uh, who has joined us here. Is that is that Benjamin? Yes. Hi. Hi, good, Benjamin. Good afternoon, evening, wherever you are. <laughs> Hello. Good morning here. I'm located in Barcelona. And I'm in I'm in Zurich. Uh, thanks for joining us, Benjamin. Very welcome. Yeah, I know what it's like uh, with um, sometimes panels not coming together, um, uh, especially with all the elevated uncertainty around COVID. We we had a a dropout on my panel as well. Okay, so, uh, you were on an earlier panel today. Yeah, I hosted a panel called um, uh, "Asians as Futurists." So we've sort of reflecting on um, the the future of Asia. Um, so I was intrigued by your uh, thoughts on on storytelling as a yeah. Cyprian, can you join also? Well, these, this, these sessions can be pretty lively if you get a good turnout of people. Um, uh, how many panelists came onto your, your session, Benjamin? Uh, I had three others and myself. Three others, okay. Hello. Hello. Hi, Cyprian. Hi, Hi Cyprian. How, nice to meet you. Nice, nice to meet you, too. Nice to meet you. Uh, Cyprian, I think this is the first time we've actually met. We've been together on the BTT group for about a year now. Yes, but you were the chair of a, a panel at Horasis meeting, I think at the last meeting in Kashkaish. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and uh, we had the chance to meet personally in Kashkaish. So I, I'm actually really hardly waiting for going back to Kashkaish again. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a great, it's a great place. Yeah. It's a great exactly. place. Well, we, we, have a, we have a little new twist here today. I hope you got, I hope. Uh, Cyprian and Benjamin can both stay with us through through this uh, panel, and it's just be, going to become somewhat impromptu. Although I do have some notes and sort of a little a little uh, path that I thought I would follow through. Two of our panelists didn't show up today. Uh, Zurab and Ned um, have not showed up, and uh, but uh, Jordi and I had our 
our panel or our uh, test session uh, dry run last week, and so we actually spent about 45 minutes uh, just chatting and getting uh, getting acquainted. So why don't we, if it's okay for you guys, you want to join the panel and you'll be our panelist with us today. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, I would listen. <laughs> <laughs> I was yeah, organizing I uh, this down as long as my internet um, uh, is is stable. So, um, but would lo love to hear a few of your thoughts and then reflect back on them. Um, okay, if, if that's good. Yeah, yeah. We're we're planning a a, a big client uh, meeting in 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 next week uh, in California with some of our one of our big clients. And we said, who wants to participate? We have about 12 people from our side. And one guy raised his hand and he said, I'm, I'm not going to speak, but I'm a, I'm a, I want to be a key listener. <laughs> <laughs> so we can, we can all be key listeners or key speakers. So I thought I would, uh, you know, welcome everybody. It's only us here and just kick off with, uh, with uh, Frank, Frank's uh, challenge, uh, a rich storytelling, a rich picture of the future. Uh, long Asian storytelling has been an accepted thorn in the side of the powerful, and we all think of China, of course, as the powerful. And there have been epic tales and fantasies, and there are prophecies that may become epic if they're proven correct. I think that's a very interesting question that he's posed for us to explore, um, prophecies that, that can become epic if they're proved correct. Um, what, do, what do today's storytellers foretell of the future? And which tales ought we to heed and why? And um, Benjamin, I'm going to be very interested to hear your thoughts on it being a futurist uh, for, for Asia. Um, so uh, first of all, why don't we, uh, since, um, since uh, Jordi and I met last, last week online, can we go through introductions, self-introductions? And there may be other people joining the, joining the session uh, as we, as we uh, go along. Um, I can give you my background briefly. I'm from the U.S., Chicago, Milwaukee area. I've been living in Europe for the past 40 years. I'm um, based in Zurich. I'm CEO and chairman of a company called Rock Lake, which is involved in the private equity, venture capital, and technology areas, as well as real estate, infrastructure, uh, and biotechnology for raising capital for lar both large and small projects. And we've done projects all over the world. Um, it's an interesting area because the one fungible commodity that we really have is money. And money is always interested in projects, uh, no matter what, uh, what sector they're in. Um, and you get into conversations around risk return and so forth. So I, I, I find it's a very interesting area to be in. I've been at it for about the past 30 years. Um, and uh, I met, I met uh, Frank about 12 13 years ago through an introduction and attended one of his first sessions here in Zurich, which was preceded right before Davos. And then since then, I've been attending two or three per year, um, a lot of them in Kashkai in the last uh, couple of years while he's settled in, in Kashkai as a sort of a home uh, place for Harassus. Uh, Frank is based here in Zurich. I've known him personally for quite some time and we get together socially and I consider him a real thought leader in, in the world, he's an amazing guy. Um, so Jordi, do you want to go next and give your short background and we can jump into the topics? Yeah, sure. Thanks, uh, John. And, uh, yeah, fully agree. Eh? Everything you said about Frank, it's, uh, something th that I share. Uh, you know, my name is, uh, uh, Jordi Raffles. Um, I'm located in Barcelona, uh, currently acting as a CEO at a company. It's called InnoGet. Uh, also being one of the co-founders of the company, we've been in uh, the uh, open innovation space or market for more than two decades uh today running uh what we call an open innovation network aimed at connecting different stakeholders actively participating in uh, innovation r d and uh, technology knowledge transfer activities so basically uh, our objective our vision our mission is uh yeah trying to foster and enhance uh cooperation among uh, these uh, uh stakeholders so uh supporting them in um, setting up joint collaboration projects so on top of these activities that we run uh and we help um yeah uh, governments uh economic promotion agencies cluster organizations 
also university scientific uh, and, and technology parks to build their own ecosystems by using the online uh, yeah we bet for the online as a way to uh, yeah uh, speed up uh, the uh, economic development and uh, the way to share the wealth fair in a more uh, yeah sustainable way so yeah, we like to um, be very active in uh, supporting ecosystem building around uh, innovation and technology. So that's why we offer this uh, type of activities to this type of stakeholders. So happy to listen to your thoughts as well on on uh, the Asian market. Asian market in terms of innovation is one of the uh, yeah drivers uh, for innovation in the coming years. We all know that. So, yeah, happy to have this conversation with all of you. Great. Thanks. Thanks, Jordi. Uh, Benjamin, do you want to go next and introduce yourself? Yeah. Um, my, my speakers are a little bit quiet, so I'm, I'm doing my best to follow. Um, if I end up answering a wrong question at any point, uh, just forgive me. It's a, it's a, a technical issue. Um, yeah, I'm a, a futurist. I, I, I was a former... Well, I'm a former investor. I was in the finance sector for a while, always seeking to discern the, the bigger paradigm shifts. Uh, and uh, so I ended up in macro uh, investment and always interested in asset allocation. But um, I guess as, as I got older, I, I, I became more and more interested in, um, I guess, the biggest stories of our time, um, one of which is, the, the ecological crisis we're currently facing. And I just came back from um, Glasgow, COP26. Cop um, what else can I say? Um, I, I used to speak at lots of conferences. Uh, I'm not a fan of digital. I'd much rather see people in person and look them in the eye. Um, so I, I cut back on uh, speaking um, with, with COVID, but uh, I've um, for the last couple of years I've been consistent in uh, in trying to support Frank's uh, efforts with Horasis and I'm excited to meet in person next year in uh, at Cascades uh, fingers crossed mm -hmm. uh, and I, I, I guess I also coach a lot of leaders one-on-one -on -one, um, mm -hmm. bo both as a futurist and a sounding board for the future but but also um, I, I guess uh, a little bit like an executive or life coach interesting well, we need a lot of a lot more leadership and a lot more coaching to get the world out of the problems that it's in and get into a more positive uh, future, right? Yeah, sustainable future. And Cyprian, do you, you want to share your background so then we can all know who we're talking to? Yes, thank you very much. I will briefly share your uh, my background to you. Uh, I'm based in Transylvanian part of Romania. Actually, I'm associated with a company which is called Autonova, and uh, yes, we are acting in the automotive industry, uh, but we are actually a group of companies, and Autonova is only one of the companies involved in our group of business, and which is part of our group of business. Uh, I am also a university teacher. I hold a PhD in finance accounting, and in the last time, I am also a member of the board of one of the most important Romanian financial institutions, which is the National Credit Guarantee Fund, uh, an institution through which all the governmental programs for small medium enterprises in Romania are passed, are managed, and we provide state aid and guarantees to uh, the small medium enterprises from Romania. Uh, I can tell you that I'm very active internationally. As John uh, told you, we know each other from uh, a group, Barcelona Think Tank. I traveled a lot. I'm a member in the Asia CEO community, a CEO club in Hong Kong. Before the pandemic, I used to represent Romanian companies abroad because the Romanian culture is not so connected to international traveling and international interaction. I liked it very much and I did it for a lot of companies, especially before the pandemic. Now I can tell you that I'm very, very involved in here in, within Romania, especially because of my nomination in that national company, which is totally owned by the Romanian state. And uh, I'm very optimistic about the future, not 
about the Romanian future, not only about the Romanian future, but generally about the future of mankind. All the turbulent times that uh, the, the humanity faced in the history were moments in which basic pillars were re-established on new coordinates. And my opinion is that including our times, this COVID-19 pandemic will help us to better understand the need for taking care of the environment, for investing in that kind of spatial uh, innovation things like SpaceX is doing. I think that this will help us to better understand the need of interaction and of accepting uh, the collaboration between different cultures. So uh, I think that this last year and a half helped us very much in getting actually closer instead of finding all the things that separates us from one continent to another. About Asia, because this meeting is about Asia, of course, Asia is the biggest continent. And from my point of view, from economic point of view, it will be one of the economic parts of the world which cannot be avoided but each company which wants to grow will have to find collaboration with Asian counterparts from different countries, of course. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Uh, thank you. Um, so as this, con this uh, panel is about storytelling, um, and I don't know to what extent any of us are, are specialists in storytelling, but I thought it was very prescient of, uh, of, of Frank to focus in on the question about storytelling um, because I did a little bit of research on it and in fact there's a lot of uh, uh, associations and platforms around the world in all cultures that have that promote storytelling which I had not been aware of and they they, 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 they sort of start way back in oral days before there's even writing um, which carried culture from uh, one generation to the next. And then they went into what I call the period of the rocks, which is, uh, you know, hieroglyphics and the writing it in Egypt and in uh, caves in Europe and uh, caves in the U S and Indians in the North American Indians, native Indians in the U S and Aztecs, you find examples uh, trying to pass along. And it was also sort of a method that they used for memory because they would come up with stories, the grandfathers and the elders, stories, and they would commit it to the rocks using paint or chalk, and that was the way that it was passed on. And then we moved into you know, the printing press and being able to use the whole era of what's called media, everything from the Bible to, um, to uh, you know, printed media, and uh, being able to pass uh, stories through books, uh, printed media, uh, and then film, and now, because you're all involved, or a lot of you involved in, in digital, in the digital era, and you mentioned that, Benjamin, you're not a big fan of digital, but I think it's a wave that's going on in the world that we just can't uh, avoid. You know, we all have two phones, four computers, uh, computers in, our, in the dashboards of our cars. Uh, you know, you sleep with it next to you at night. You check it in the middle of the night. Um, and and uh, Jordy is uh, uh, an accelerator in the space of dig digitalization and innovation and community building through specifically through digital. So it's something you can't run away from. It's like a tsunami. It's just it's it's in us and on us and around us. And I think that leads into, uh, you know, the, the story or the question about, you know, using digital and technology in in uh, in Asia. Uh, it's obviously very, very prevalent in every single country, especially the, the advanced countries, and the extent to which you know countries like China, particularly, uh, and Russia are using digital to be able to penetrate uh, the Pentagon and pen penetrate our banking and financial systems. Uh, and I'm not quite sure where storytelling factors into that, but if you start to look at the epic stories that are told, um, uh, by people now, it is indeed, as you said, uh, Cyprian, it's, it's uh, foretelling, um, you know, either very positive or very negative uh, consequences uh, for the clash of ideology that's going on right now with China hegemony, uh, China's dominance, uh, technologi technological advancement going to space. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the big question, I think, is, uh, are are we and there, there's this group called the Quad, 
which is which consists of the U.S., Australia, Japan, and uh, who is it? Japan and India, US, huh? India, India, yeah, 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 yeah. Who are the Asian countries? And you have to kind of consider you the U.S. an Asian country because it's on the Pacific on the Pacific side. Who are sort of forming a wall, a wall of resistance, or a wall of almost like the Voice of America uh, syndrome, saying, you know, China's desire to try to um, conquer, expand, dominate the world. Um, the, the 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 other side is the the Quad, which have the de democratic and the and sort of the the Western value system. It's it's democratic um, populism versus versus uh, authoritarianism really that's the clash you see it playing out in taiwan you see it playing out in in hong kong you know you see it playing out in places where china is trying to you know move its dominance so your remarks and your comments on this will be very interesting and it'll show whether you you know which side of the aisle you're on um is china good or bad um what they're doing um so maybe uh, maybe the futurist among us, Benjamin, you could uh, kick, kick off with some of your thoughts about what's happening in the world and Asia's Asia's role in it, and Asia's not just China. Asia's also Indonesia and Vietnam and Australia and New Zealand. Yeah. Um, well, first, actually, I just want to say something about storytelling. Um, you know, that some so some people, anthropologists, etc., and I've done no research for this panel of course um if i'd known i was going to be on it i would have uh with great zest done some uh a bit more research but um because i i believe that storytelling is really important and that it's um i i said uh frank invited me on the podium just before this uh this panel and i i said that the the thing that what one thing that distinguishes human beings uh from the rest of the animal kingdom um, is our ability to tell stories and it's mm -hmm. because we tell stories and we have narratives we can change direction very quickly and um what one the one well-known theologian um 20 years ago uh, so well known i've forgotten his name but um it probably come back to me in a moment said that the the problem with mankind humankind at the moment is that we're in between stories and and in in a way that's that's been true up until recently uh in, in the western world you know we we used to have a story about democracy and etc cetera, etc cetera, but we sort of lost our meta story and um i think the ecological crisis we're facing which of course it's not just climate change it's a sixth extinction and climate change and plastic in the oceans and 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 uh and uh it's linked in with uh, um, wealth discrepancies. It's going to be very difficult to solve the crisis unless we deal with some other issues. Um, I, I believe that the chance, there's a good chance now that we can create a new story for humanity. So, um, and, and they say they say there's two types of stories. There's the the stories that that are passed on in order to pass on knowledge and wisdom. To, to the next generation so that they conform with social norms. But the, the other type of story is the hero's journey, which was popularized by Joseph Campbell. Um, and you can see it present in all the sort of the, the odyssey, the, the notion of the odyssey, the, the Greek odyssey that, that he, a, a human being is here to, to go out and do something, um, uh, bigger than himself or herself, the the, the notion of the hero, mm -hmm. and um, in some ways that that's the right. I think that that's called the right hand path, and those stories inspire you to actually break the norms. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, we're in an era now where we're facing such large crises. Um, we need to kind of break down a lot of our old old normals, and so storytelling is really important. Um, and I think it's coming back. Um, I think that um, I, at COP I spent time with indigenous people from around the world and arranged a meeting between indigenous, indigenous elders and, and the COP presidency and they, they've, they've kept their storytelling 
um, as you said in your introduction, passing on knowledge and inspiration. Um, I uh, I don't normally live in the UK. I, I've been in Asia t- over 20 years, but um, I, I took one of the cop delegates around all of the uh, ancient places in southern England, Avebury and Stonehenge and the, the places famous for the Druids. Mm-hmm. And um, the, the Druids actually, apparently, allegedly, um, uh, on purpose didn't write anything down because they believed um, that there was some, there's something powerful about the oral tradition and that actually the greatest form of wisdom um, you can't you if you write it down it makes it immutable um unchangeable uh whereas mm. wisdom is uh spontaneous d- dependent on situation it has fluidity um mm-hmm. interests and overlaps with the zen tradition that i've been part of for the 20 years i've lived in asia um mm-hmm. so we need to store it i mean just to conclude on stories um we need to we need to story tell ourselves into a more desirable future. Yeah, my, my old job involved a lot of predictions about the future and scenarios and on the back of that making investments. But now uh, I'm uh, much more interested in, in building this, this new preferable or desirable future. I'm happy to talk about the state of the world, but I don't want to monopolize the, uh, our, our time. Well, that's some very interesting comments you've made. I, I, I would love to go on, but I think, yeah, you're right. We should, we should roll around a little bit. Um, Cyprian, uh, how would you add on top of what Benjamin just said, given your, your global exp- uh, outreach into Asia from Romania and uh, deep involvement in Romanian state factors? Uh- uh, yes, I would like to point a few things as a continuation of the discussion about storytelling. People, nations like hearing beautiful stories. When this pandemic started, you know, it first started in Asia, then it moved here in Europe. Uh, the first thing that I was doing was to call my Asian colleagues, which had the previous SARS experience and they had all kinds of procedures already prepared for how to manage the uh, teams and this kind of things. And I discussed a lot with them. But when the pandemic uh, started here in Europe, it was a total uh, uncertainty about the decisions that the authorities should take. And no authorities in in Europe were 100% prepared for what they should decide. And uh, on such a ground, uncertain ground, I decided with my colleagues to have a total, totally different approach. And I presented today uh, in my intervention in, in, in my panel, in the, my previous panel. So briefly, uh, I decided to discuss with four uh, representatives of professions which are totally out of our business, but which can help me and us to uh, prepare to better communicate with our teams with our customers, with our suppliers, with everybody. And uh, we discussed first with a doctor because uh, the COVID-19 problem was a medical problem and we had to understand exactly what's going on. Then I discussed with a university teacher which is teaching psychology because when you are sending message to more people, I think it's very important to, to better understand how to send mass uh, influential, influential information to, to those teams. Then the third thing, because in Romania, one of the most uh, uh, respected and highly trusted institutions is the church, the, the Orthodox Church, but all the churches. Actually, the church is very, very highly trusted by people. I discussed with a priest, and then to finally um, make myself able to better uh, tell stories. Yeah, a quick people. question. A quick question. Oh, a quick question. Do, yes. don't, lose, don't lose your place. Did you also? Uh, did you also include the mosques and synagogues? And absolutely, uh, uh, absolutely, everybody. All all the churches are very, very highly respected here in Romania as as, as institutions. Yeah. And after after discussing with this uh, three different professions, uh, we discussed with one more, and that was an actor. 
a comedy actor. And what do I discuss with him? How he can help me to better uh, 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 make the stories, uh, to make beautiful stories to people, to make our customers hear what they want, to make our suppliers hear what they want in a beautiful, positive message, colorful words and this kind of things. And uh, even if it's quite strange that uh, we discuss with people which are totally out of, of the business, the final conclusion, which I can take already since the mid of this year, is that we had a very good approach because we we were working in each day. We were not closing, not even for one day. Of course, some of the colleagues were working randomly and this kind of things. But discussing with these uh, professions, which may, made me, help me, help us to understand better how is the medical problem, how is uh, possible to better send psychological messages to our clients, how it's possible to make them to feel uh, 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 secure and safe from spiritual point of view and how we can use better words and better examples uh, to, to, to make them hear the beautiful things that they want. Uh, uh, it was total panic here at the beginning. And uh, this approach of us helped us to make uh, our team feel more optimistic, more connected to the fact that uh, the life is not ending. Uh, that we will face and we will go through a difficult time, but finally the, the sun will uh, rise again on the sky of everybody. It was quite interesting, I think. Very interesting. Good uh, good comments. We'll add them, add them in. Uh, Jordi, so my my question to you is... Uh, you are in the you are in the mode of accelerating connectivity among people using digital and and technology and forming new relationships a bit like what Jordi has done uh, well a bit like what uh, uh, Cyprian is is talking about um, uh, trying to better understand where where are we as people what are the big challenges and how do we overcome them together as as Benjamin has sort of said what what are your thoughts <coughs> storytelling. Well, storytelling and that is that, that's a good question yeah before answering the question let me tell you that i i i, I felt very comfortable just acting as a as a key listener eh? so uh learning from from you benjamin eh? and cyprian eh? so very inspiring what you say and uh i fully agree in uh, almost everything that you've mentioned here so um yeah, I think that uh, the the um, uh, yeah we all know eh, that uh, in one way or another the novel pandemic has affected uh, each and every individual, government, industry, company. <clears throat> it had a it had a global societal impact eh, that has cost lives, second millions of people. And uh, um, when people ask me uh, how and when are we going to come back to to the new normal, uh, I always uh, answer the same. Way, yeah. I think there is no new normal to pursue. There is an, an opportunity just to build something different uh, um, uh, and uh, to empower society uh, to embrace creativity, cross border cooperation, and innovation at the end, right? So, if we really want to transform the way we have been uh, developing uh, our society, we, re we need to really dig into what uh, it's important to me, which is education. Uh? We cannot change the world if we don't educate our people uh, in different values. Eh? And uh, I would say being more uh, uh, eager to, to share the value more uh, fair, in a more fair way, I would say. Eh? And uh, I, I'd say leadership, there's a lack of leadership uh, everywhere. And um, I think we need to change uh, leaders <laughs> in some, uh, at least, if not change them, trying to re-educate them, eh? upskill them, reskill them in many aspects of what they do or, or what they do pursue at the end, or they uh, uh, um, shareholders. So it's about creating a stakeholder um, cooperation eh? and uh, and share the value among uh, ecosystem players. This is the way I see it. So I think storytelling is very powerful. Is that powerful that it has been stolen by uh, leaders? It has been stolen and uh, used by marketing in order to just guide the uh, humankind into a direction which is driven by capitalism. And uh, at the end of the day, 
this is about uh, consuming and uh, just not being sure what really brings us uh, uh, happiness. Eh? And so I think uh, there is a, a, a crisis of trust. Uh, that's one of the biggest uh, challenges that we need to overcome. And if we are able to uh, build trust again among all of us, we will be able to just change the world. And if we look back uh, in history, uh, some of you said uh, something about a tsunami. I think it was you, John, talking about tsunami. We are facing a tsunami of new technologies right now and innovation. Eh? And uh, it looks like there is a war uh, among different uh, parts of the world uh, uh, to see who is going to lead this, this tsunami of new technology that will uh, uh, allow the countries and, uh, and nations uh, to become even much more powerful. And I think that technology, uh, it should be embraced in a way to transform the world in a more sustainable one and that uh, gives opportunities to much more people, right? So again, uh, it's uh, about, uh, uh, from my side, uh, we run an, an, a digital platform, of course, but we always like to build it in a way that uh, we provide trust among participants within, uh, within the platform. We deal with intellectual property, uh, we, we deal with uh, idea sharing, knowledge transfer, so this is a key element. And uh, yeah, uh, uh, we always say the same. Eh? If you don't uh, trust each other, uh, chances are that you will not be able to cooperate because you will not ask the question in a proper way and you will not get the answer uh, that you desire, right? So again, just to summarize a little bit, uh, uh, it's about uh, trust, uh, um, reskilling uh, leaderships, uh, if not changing them, and also about uh, using storytelling, storytelling, which all uh, use, uh, even in our own businesses and our personal life, in a much more, uh, yeah, cohesion way. Eh? So, um, you know, I, 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 we run an, a business in open innovation, eh? and uh, I always like to say that uh, there is an African proverb that says that if you want to go far, go alone. If you want to go... Uh, 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 Sorry, it's the other way around. So if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. And I think that if you are able to cooperate, we can go fast and far at the same time. Eh? So that's my view on this. Eh? So, yeah, I don't know if you read this, but... Um, no, interesting, interesting. I'm thinking about, you know, the... We, and we have to end, actually, pretty soon. So we've had some good uh, input. I think we have about two minutes left, but... Maybe I can just say that, you know, for the advancement of society is what we're kind of talking about here, starting with storytelling in Asia, you know, and the technology uh, imp impact. If you look back a little bit like leadership, you talked about leadership, uh, Jordi. And if you look back in the Middle Ages, there was a crisis of leadership and it was about uh, fiefdoms and uh, small groups uh, controlling the population. And that caused revolution. And and. So then there were uh, the advent of, you know, different political and economic and uh, state uh, country national systems, uh, always trying to move down line towards a better, a better world. And if you look at, um, you know, now uh, we have uh, like, uh, in, in, we have a clash of values between the, the, not the East and the West, but I say it's between authoritarianism and democracy. And uh, and if you overlay technology onto that, you look at uh, like Facebook and you look at the impact of technology, like the Arab Spring, how fast social structures in in regions and countries of the world can change because storytelling, which is accelerated and promoted by technology these days, not just sitting around the campfire anymore, but you know, really reaching the masses can really. Over overhaul and and completely change structure. Look, look in the U.S. All these statues of heroes in the American story are being pulled down uh, because they uh, because they own slaves and um, and that's because partly you know uh, social media and values and norms being realized and uncovered and changed. So. I guess I'm just thinking that, uh, you know, storytelling itself has changed because of the advent of technology and education. And we're moving into a world of where, where 
change is more and more intense and more and more uh, more and more rapid because something happens in Egypt and the whole world knows about it within five minutes. And 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 controlling information, which is what's going on in the authoritarian regimes like Cuba, like North Korea, like China, are are really kind of like pushing back against this world trend of more and more transparency, more and more um, storytelling uh, across more and more mediums. And I'm just wondering how long can that last? Do you, do you have any final thoughts about that? We'll wrap up, Benjamin. Yeah, there's a Hopi proverb, those that tell the stories rule the world. And, um, you know, maybe uh, arguably mm-hmm. for the last few decades, we've kind of had the wrong people telling, telling us the wrong stories. And I believe that a new global story is emerging. And that's what I'm grappling with now in, in writing a book. But um, I, I believe that we're, we, we will transition into a global ecological civilization. And um, that, that's my hope and aspiration. What One thing about Asian storytelling, though, um, uh, I've been looking a little bit at Chinese science fiction and the audacity of their visions is absolutely incredible. And it reminds me of uh, H.G. Wells or, or perhaps earlier times. Uh, you can tell from the ambitiousness of the stories, um, uh, arguably, this, um uh, how successful a country might become and, and maybe China's ambitiousness uh, in sci- science and technology. It's in, it's really incredible if you have a look at some of their sci-fi. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, it's uh, like all these panels at Horasis, we, we could probably sit in a circle and, and speak for days. So um, th- yeah. thanks for inviting me on spontaneously. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Cyprian, do you want to... Very short remarks. Uh, I consider that uh, there are much more things which uh, unite us, the Asians with Europeans, the Asians with Americans, Europeans with Americans. So um, my strong belief is that in the future, in spite of this clash that we are talking about, there will be a convergence in thinking, in action and in dialogue. Uh, I'm certain that in the future there will be uh, less conflicts and I really hope that uh, the the nations will have in front of them as leaders persons which will understand the need of dialogue, uh, the need of uh, openly talking all the issues and the need of uh, making their people to be closer to one each other as actually there is the foundation of the humanity. Thank you. That's great. Jordi, you get the closing comments. Well, yeah, uh, for sure. Just a couple of comments eh, on uh, everything that have been discussing about um, yeah, storytelling and uh, the future of, of the humankind a little bit. Eh? Um, I think uh, I'm, I'm very optimistic by nature. Uh, by nature, and uh, I think we are advancing. Eh? Uh, uh, and uh, being talking about this today among uh, the four of us, it's uh, yeah a proof that uh, yeah we are improving. But uh, uh, regarding to just two comments, eh? regarding to uh, storytelling, I think there is a surplus of uh, storytelling and information. It means that yeah, it's uh, information is available, but it's there's too ma- too much information out there that just uh, it's very easy to forget about what happened a few minutes ago. Eh? And there is new news coming in. So uh, we lack also of focus, which is related to leadership. So we need to focus. Eh? We need focus. Uh, uh, so we are in the good direction, but somehow we need uh, some someone, eh? uh, any structure that uh, helps us to focus. And the other thing which I... Uh, I uh, I think we have the opportunity to speed up in this process is that COVID-19 crisis, I don't think it's, it has been enough to provoke change. Okay. Uh, it could be that uh, if this crisis is combined with uh, some kind of new technology that uh, helps us to better uh, 
talk one to each other in a more trustful way. Again, the, for me, trust is a, is a key element. Then uh, maybe we could accelerate this process of transforming the economy and the society in a more sustainable one. I mean, uh, we are very uh, monitored and managed and directed by financial institutions, by government. So maybe uh, when it appeared internet a uh, few decades ago, and the world seemed that it will change very fast, then we have all realized that it has not been the case. But maybe in this uh, current moment, if we just, for instance, develop this blockchain technology that allows us to uh, talk to one to each other without having such a, a mass of uh, people monitoring us or, or, or so many rules, then maybe uh, we could be able to accelerate this process. Uh, that's that's my, th my thought. Eh? I think... Uh, we need to combine different uh, crises with technology in order to make things happen in a more fast uh, way. That's all from my side. Interesting. Well, we're getting some comments coming from people uh, that are watching or have joined our session. I guess we've got six. There's two others in addition to us. Um, but we've uh, we've come to the end of our session and probably each of us need to move along uh, and uh, get on to the next sessions, and um, so we'll we'll uh, we'll hit the pause button here. Sundeep and uh, Sundeep, uh, thank you for your questions. Uh, we're at we're at the end of our session. Um, uh, it's been it's it's my experience with these harasses meetings, and, uh, and somehow particularly these online sessions, has been that you never know at the start where it's going to go during the session, and at the end of the session you say, "Wow, what an interesting conversation." Uh, and um, since yesterday was Thanksgiving in the U.S., I wish that I could invite you guys all to our Thanksgiving dinner next year here in Zurich so we can continue the discussion. Fantastic. That would be fantastic. John, thanks yeah. for, for moderating. That would be great. Excellent. Excellent. Have a good day. Likewise. Thank you, Thank Thank you. you John. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you all. Have fun. Bye for now. Bye-bye.